Hello and welcome. I'm Melissa Ntumwoka. Tonight, incumbent AKG State Deputy Governor Kolapo Lushola wins the AKG State People's Democratic Party governorship primary election. Governors of the Lake Chad Basin and Development Partners meet in Meduguri, the Bornu State capital, to discuss strategies towards restoring peace in the region. Senate invites security chiefs to explain solutions to continued communal clashes in the country, sets up committee to investigate the proliferation of small arms. And U.S. pulls out of the nuclear deal with Iran. President Trump says agreement was one-sided and wrong. On business news tonight, International Monetary Fund forecasts improved growth for sub-Saharan Africa economy this year, but says slow growth in Nigeria and South Africa is impacting the region. On sports news, it's action-packed day two at the Lagos preliminaries as school advanced to the quarter-final stage of the season 10 of the channel's International Kids Cup. And from Abuja, court orders interim in forfeiture of 9.2 billion naira and 8.3 million dollars linked to Patience Jonathan, wife of former president Goodluck Jonathan. Again tonight with the emergence of the incumbent deputy governor of Ekiti State, Professor Kolapo Lushola, as the candidate of the People's Democratic Party for the state's governorship election holding on the 14th of July 2018. Professor Lushola pulled 1,191 votes to defeat his rival, former Minister of State for Works, Dayo Adeye, who scored 771 votes. The result was declared by the Delta State Governor, Dr. Ifai Okowa, who presided over the exercise. The PDP adopted the open secret ballot system amidst tight security at the venue, with no breach reported. By virtue of the fact that I'm chairman of the state's Congress Committee for the State PDP, Kumatura Congress, that I hereby Return Prince, yeah. no, Professor Kolako Ulushola, Professor Kolako Ulushola, as the duly nominated gubernatorial aspirant a candidate of the PDP for a state gubernatorial elections. Meanwhile, the National Working Committee of the All Progressives Congress has cancelled the Ekiti State governorship primaries and fixed May the 11th, 2018 for a fresh exercise. This follows the violence that trailed the conduct of the poll on Saturday, May the 5th. The National Publicity Secretary of the party, Bolaji Abdullahi, announced the cancellation at a news conference in Abuja. He explained that new measures have been put in place to prevent a recurrence of violence. However, the National Vice Chairman South South has denounced the pronouncement, saying the National Working Committee never met to deliberate on the Ekiti governorship primaries. We reviewed the situation in Ekiti and we found it um, quite condemnable, the action that happened, the disruption of the primary process. And uh, we, we therefore took the following decisions uh, in reaction to it. One, that all the identified agents that participated in the suspended primary election of 5th of May 2018 are disqualified from participating in the rescheduled primaries as agent or in any other capacity in the rescheduled primaries. All agents identified to have participated in the disruption of the primaries are disqualified from taking part in whatever capacity in the rescheduled primaries. Two, all agent tax will now bear the name of the aspirant they represent. If you look at the tax, they only identify them as agent. But in reaction to the incident that happened, the names of the, the tax of the agents will now carry the particular name of the aspirants that they are representing at the, at the primary. I hear that the National Working Committee met 
over a kitty. We have not met, oh. I don't have any, and I don't have any invitation to any national working committee meeting. Anything that is said today about the kitty is the position of Oyegun. The president has departed Nigeria for a four-day trip to the United Kingdom to keep an appointment with his doctor in London. President Mohamed Dubai, who arrived at the Namdi Azikiwe International Airport, Abuja, in a helicopter before boarding the presidential aircraft, was seen off by government officials. He had made what was described by the presidency as a technical stopover in London after his meeting with U.S. President Donald Trump in Washington on the 30th of April. A statement by his senior assistant on media and publicity, Mr. Garba Shehu, yesterday explains that in the course of the technical stopover, the president had a meeting with his doctor who requested him to return, which he agreed to do. The president is expected back in Abuja on Saturday, May the 12th. In the meantime, the People's Democratic Party, PDP, has criticized the presidency over President Barry's medical trip to the United Kingdom at a time medical and health workers are on strike. At a press conference in Abuja, the PDP National Publicity Secretary decried the regularity of the president's medical trips. He added that the president's health condition interferes with his duties. It's unfortunate that President Buhari will always embark on medical tourism abroad when his administration has completely refused to address the poor state of the health sector in Nigeria, for which medical personnel are currently on strike across our nation, Nigeria. Whereas we have nothing against the president's decision to take care of his early health, as we are all subject to human frailties. Nigerians, however, detest the deception, lies, and beguiling that have trailed the handling of his own abating health issue. Even as we speak, Nigerians are not aware of the kind of ailment our president is suffering from. In conclusion, we urge the presidency to know that shrouding the issue of President Buhari's illness is secrecy is just for political gains. And it, this is neither in the interest of the president nor that of our nation at large. Suddenly, the handlers of Mr. President appear to be more concerned about the next election instead of the consequences of his failing health and the blunt breaches of our Constitution. The PDP, therefore, cancels Mr. President to be well guided and that he should take charge of his health challenges rather than chasing after electoral issues. And from politics to regional collaboration, where leaders of the late Chad Basin countries have been asked to strengthen cross-border collaboration towards addressing the crisis facing the region. This appeal comes from the UN resident coordinator, Mr. Edward Callon, at the opening of the Conference of Governors of the region in Meduguri, the Borno State capital. Also at the event, representative of the European Union, Brigitte McKinston, expressed optimism that the forum would present a platform for sharing experiences of security challenges and preferring sustainable solutions. The military defeat of the insurgents and ending the humanitarian crisis must be joined by decisive efforts to secure long-term development. This is still a daunting challenge that can only be overcome by working together across borders. The crisis is regional and the response must be regional as well. Therefore, we welcome this vital meeting, this vital forum as an important new step to finding solutions, sustainable solutions, in this region. The crisis in the Lake Chad Basin cannot be solved through a unitary approach. We must pursue a multi-pronged approach, including humanitarian assistance to save lives in the short term, development to address the root cause of this crisis, peace and counter-terrorism has been described by our Secretary General 
and we've got some true protections. And now to security. A bill for an act to repeal the Terrorism Prevention Act 2011 and enact a new law to provide for the prohibition, prevention and combating of terrorist activities in Nigeria has passed second reading. Some of the changes include incorporating kidnapping and hijacking into the bill. It also seeks to establish institutional frameworks, including the Nigeria Sanctions Committee for the implementation and enforcement of its provisions. The bill has been referred to the Committee on National Security and Intelligence. And I rise to move that a bill for an act to repeal the Terrorism Prevention Act 2011 and enact the Terrorism Prevention and Prohibition Bill to provide for measures for the prohibition, prevention and combating of terrorist activities in Nigeria and for related matters, HB 1296, be read the second time. Mr. Speaker, unlike before, we now have the offense of hostage taking, kidnapping and hiding as part of the offenses included in the acts of terrorism in the Terrorism Prevention and Provision Bill. Mr. Speaker, distinguished colleagues, as I said, I have this already uh, distributed to members. All I want to uh, request is your support to ensure that this bill, which has been in the open, in the round table, for the past five years, is allowed to go for second reading. Bill is referred to Committee on National Security and Intelligence. The Senate has invited security chiefs to come up with solutions to the proliferation of firearms in Nigeria. Presenting a motion on the matter, Senator Suleiman Hankui explains that sectarian clashes, including the Hertzman farmers crisis, are now more devastating as a result of wrongful and easy acquisition of firearms. He warns that this ugly trend is contributing to the colossal loss of lives and property in the country. Our correspondent Linda Akibe reports. It's the resumption of legislative proceedings for the week. A federal lawmaker, Senator Suleiman Hunkuyi, tables a matter which he says requires urgent attention from the three arms of government. The proliferation of firearms across the country. Meaningful effort is not seen to be done on the part of government to curtail the proliferation of firearms in Nigeria. The situation has worsened to the extent that some opinion leaders are calling on Nigerians to stand up and protect themselves. These prodding at self-defense, if not checked through action by government, would certainly get to the extent that firearm would be secured by every household, either in the name of protection or for some other heinous purposes. In his contribution, Senator Shea Usani accuses the political class as being complicit in the proliferation of firearms in Nigeria. It is not possible for our security agencies to bring an end to the violence, the killings, the bloodshed, and the proliferation of arms in this country as long as the political class include violence as part of their strategy to retain political power or to assume public office. We've been talking about this. Senate President Bukola Saraki wants drastic solutions to this problem as well as the persistent killings of Nigerians across the country. We have elections coming up and the level of of desperation on, on some parts of some people would definitely increase. So we have to find some way of addressing this issue of proliferation of firearms and how do we prevent it, how do we stop it, and how do we try and, and, and be able to round up some of these illegal firearms that, are, that exist. The Senate has also mandated its Two, Committee three, on seven. Intelligence and National Security to conduct a thorough investigation into the proliferation of firearms in the country to unravel Two, its remote seven, zero, zero. and immediate courses. Linda Kibi, Channels of Television of News. In part two, after the break, Kaduna State Governor calls for calm as he visits Gwaska community in Beningwari Council following attacks by armed bandits. Please stay with us.